So the Gold Cup group stage is complete and we have our final eight. Let's take a look about it, let's talk about it. So the final eight is set for the Gold Cup 2023. We have some interesting matchups moving forward. Let's go over them before we get into a little bit of the Canadian discussion. So in one bracket we have Panama versus Qatar. And that game is scheduled to be played Saturday, July 8th at about 7 p.m. On Sunday, you have USA versus Canada. That's going to play at 7.30. Uh, USA winning their group. Um, tied with points, but due to goal difference, number one in their group. Facing Canada, and we'll talk about Canada in a bit. We finished second in their group, um, drawing two, and then winning one. The U.S. won two and then draw one. When it came to Qatar and Panama, well, Panama topped their group with seven points, two wins and a draw. Whereas Qatar finished second in their group after defeating Mexico on the last day. And with that win, giving essentially them the move and putting Honduras out of the group stage. Honduras was down on goal difference anyways, Qatar on a 3-3. Uh, group B was won by Mexico, who will talk about their matchup, or mention their matchup quickly here. Going against Costa Rica, that's Saturday, 9.30. And then on Sunday at 5 p.m., you have Guatemala versus Jamaica. Before we get to Canada, let's talk about these two. I think one of the more interesting notes is I didn't think here of the predicted teams, I think honestly only Qatar is the only team I didn't predict to make the final eight. I always felt that uh, maybe Haiti or Honduras would go through. I said whoever won the first game between Haiti and Qatar will dictate who goes through. I said if Haiti won that game, they'll go through. If they lost that game, Honduras will go through. What I didn't factor in was Qatar then pulling a win and a draw against Honduras and Mexico. Because they did that with only three goals conceded and three goals scored they found themselves in a very good spot and are in second place um, let's go to group a usa and jamaica i mean that first game i think it's fair to say if you catch on paper this jamaica squad looks the most dangerous and because of that they really start to look better as the tournament went on the U.S. just looks more like a machine. Not quite buzzsaw yet, but they're a machine. Um, their players know a system. Their players are ready for this. They have some cohesion. So because of all that, they were a tough team to play in. Dry with Jamaica first, and then just blowing out the other two Caribbean teams, Trinidad and Tobago, as well as St. Kitts and Nevis. Not a surprise. Jamaica has grown in form since then. I think it's a very interesting matchup that they'll have against Guatemala. On paper, they have the superiority in terms of the talent, but I think Guatemala right now are playing with lightning in a bottle here. They topped their group, which no one expected them to do, and now they're facing a team um, that is better. On paper, they shouldn't win this, but they're going to have the crowd support for a lot of these Jamaican players, a lot of them coming from overseas. This will be their first hostile environment to get the likes of like Deshaun Bernard, Damari Gray, players of that nature. Some of them, you know, Mikel Antonio, uh, Daniel Johnston, uh, uh, Leon Bailey, Shamar Nichols, they've played in CONCACAF for years, so they know the environment. But this is the best adversity that they'll have faced. Um, I think for um, Hogerson, the coach, so it'll be a good evaluation of him to see kind of what they look like moving forward. Panama and Costa Rica moving out of Group C. I mean, I thought Panama would top that group. I thought El Salvador would come in second, so I was wrong on that. I thought El Salvador would come in second in that group. Maybe we have seen the ceiling of that El Salvador team. Um, they definitely have matchups that they suit them best, but I think we may be starting to see some of the pieces and the effects of a very shallow talent pool. And I think they're gonna have to recruit very hard over these next little over this next little bit either that or they're gonna have to try to develop more players because I, I feel that 
if you look around the region, right? If with teams like Guadeloupe, teams like Martinique, who are continuing to improve, you see the likes of the Caribbean teams really dipping into that diaspora, like Jamaica, we'll see Trinidad, St. Kitts, and other countries start to move forward as well. Right? I think that starts to open a door for possibilities. And if that's the case, El Salvador, who I do like, Hugo Perez as a coach, I wonder if he needs more players to win. I wonder if he needs more players to really maximize and really push this station further on. And then Group D, Guatemala topping it with two wins and a draw. Canada coming in second place with a comfortable 4-2 win over Cuba. Guadeloupe were the darlings of the tournament so far. Falling on, in heartbreaking fashion to Guatemala, giving Guatemala the group. And that is the Gold Cup as it stands. Yeah, so your matchups again, Panama, Qatar, USA, Canada on one bracket. Mexico, Costa Rica, and Guatemala, Jamaica. I, I think if you look at the uh, the USA, Canada, and Qatar, Panama bracket, I, I think it's it's a fair statement to say whoever wins that Canada US matchup is more than likely going to the final. I don't see either of the other teams poisoning a threat, especially if we all expect it to be the US. Um, so that being the case. Mexico, Costa Rica, that is interesting. Guatemala, Jamaica, I think that game will be closer than people give it credit to be. On paper, again, the talent and the quality is on the Jamaican side, but this Guatemalan side have really are tapping into something. And they are, I think, outside of the outside of the US and Mexico, they are the best supported team in this tournament. So with that being the case. I think they'll be it'll be a nice hostile environment and they'll have to do their best to weather that. So if we're gonna go score predictions, I'm gonna go and let's start off with our Saturday matchups. So Saturday matchups are Panama versus Qatar. I think Panama takes that by a score of two nil. I'll even go as crazy to say Waterman with a brace. I think that's where you have that. So that's the first game on Saturday. Then you have Mexico versus Costa Rica. And I think Costa Rica has looked more explosive in this tournament in terms of their finishing ability. Uh, Mexico has the longevity as well as the name brand. I think if anything is going to happen, I think it's going to be Mexico in a high scoring affair. I think it's going to be Mexico 4, Costa Rica 3. I think with the likes of Joel Campbell and this Mexican side trying to still find its feet, I think they'll create opportunities and finish, but I think their defense will be more of a sieve, and I think Costa Rica will be able to take advantage of the opportunities that they have. As long as uh, Luis Rano Suarez doesn't try to sit back low block and try to counter that way. I think he has a talent to play up right with Mexico, and I think that will be where that game goes. Going to the Sunday matchups, Guatemala versus Jamaica. On paper, you'd say this is like, what, a 3-1, 4-1 game for Jamaica? I think Guatemala, with the fan support, make this a very tight game. I see this going to extra time. Um, I think both sides definitely score in the first 90. The question is, can Guatemala keep up with the talent, with the likes of Mikel Antonio, Damari Gray, Bobby Cordova Reed, Leon Bailey. Can they compete with the likes of that? If they can answer like they did against a team like Guadalupe, I think they bode better. But Guadalupe doesn't play at a quick pace. Guatemala plays at a pace. And I think Jamaica, if they speed up this game, an up and down game suits Jamaica much better than it will for Guatemala. So I'm going to go with a extra time 4-2. I think it's going to be 2-2 at the end of the first 90, but then extra time, Jamaica puts it away with two goals. And then the final game of the weekend, Canada versus the U.S. 
I did jump on a YouTube, she would say, Canada wins 1-0. The only way I see that is if Canada is able to convert and defend really well, similar to their matchups in World Cup qualifiers, where they're able to find goals on the counter and on moments, but then defend well enough to take away the chances that are there. This USA team right now just looks like a machine. And Canada hasn't really done anything to prove any confidence in them. Um, with that being the case, um, so on paper, based off of how they looked, I think this is a a solid, what, 4-1 game. Now, Herdman has a few days to reevaluate and look. I think if we look at this lineup, the thing it's been missing is some dynamic, just playmaking ability both on the wings as well as in the midfield um yes we know we did it they did it against uh, cuba but adding a player like Jaden nelson who really adds the attack i think if i were the coach this is what i would do i would just play if i were the coach i would start Schaffelberg on one wing i'd go 4-4-2 or a 4-3-3 start Schaffelberg on one wing um, put Hoylet on the other wing, put Cavallini up. In the midfield, you go either Frazier and or Bombito with Osorio and Nelson. So I'm going with a 4-3-3 here. And then for the back four, I go Ahmed, Larea, and then McGraw and Miller. That's if you're going to go with a 4-3-3. If you go a 4-4-2, I think you go with, again, I think in that situation you go Hoylet and Cavallini up top. On the wings, you go, or the midfielder side, you go, hmm. I think you put, yeah, you put Liam Miller on one side, and then you put a player like Jacob Schaffelberg on the other side. In the midfield, you go again with Frazier and Osorio. I think Bombito, we've seen enough. I think I want to see him at center back afterwards. And in the back four, again, same thing. Ahmed and Larea, and then McGraw and Miller. If Vittoria's fit to play, I wouldn't mind seeing a Vittoria play. I know Herbman may want to play with a little bit more mobile center backs here. And seeing Scott Candy play, that may be an indicator of that. I'd be curious to see what Candy looks like in a back four versus a back three. But yeah, this is what we have so far, guys. CONCACAF is set. You guys let me know in the comments who you're rooting for, who you think has the best chance to hoist the title. I'll be all ears for it.